Tonight, Louisville Metro Police closed their investigation into the mass shooting at Old National Bank in April and released the details we have been waiting to see. Hello everybody, it's our top story. I'm Doug Prophet. We have the motive stated by the gunman himself, but first new tonight, the families are out with a statement about Connor Sturgeon's actions that day. They're saying on behalf of survivors and families, attorneys say in part, the release of the police report on the old National Bank mass shooting is an important step for those personally impacted by the tragedy as well as for the community. The statement goes on to say, our hearts are with our clients this week as they process this painful report, while many of them have an empty seat at their Thanksgiving table or they reflect on the deep trauma they have experienced this year. End quote. Now we want to get to the evidence for you in that file and the motive given by the shooter himself. WHS 11 Night Teams Taylor Woods is here in Taylor. Police discovered that he had a plan, but that it came together in just a matter of days, not weeks. Doug, investigators say Connor Sturgeon, he actually planned and executed the shooting within one week. This 64 page report includes writings that show how he planned the shooting and why. One family friend of a victim tells me there needs to be a mental health assessment before people buy rifles. Body camera video shows Louisville Metro Police Officers Nicholas Wilt and Corey Galloway arriving to Old National Bank April 10th. Tuesday afternoon, LMPD released a 64-page report detailing personal notes and letters that 25-year-old bank employee Connor Sturgeon wrote to family and friends days before the shooting. The evidence file includes this selfie taken by Sturgeon five days before the shooting, portraying the Joker face that's popular on social media. Sturgeon and described how easy it was for him to buy an AR-15, four magazines, and 120 rounds of ammunition for $700. That receipt from River City Firearms is seen here. I mean, not only his note, it's it's proven every day through the mass shootings that happen across the country that how easy it is to buy an assault weapon. Police say he fired a total of 40 rounds that day. Sturgeon called himself a psycho, telling his parents to fight lawmakers on lax gun laws, asking for them to stop the sale of weapons of mass destruction. Please do something. Dr. Muhammad Babur has been pleading for an end to gun violence. He's also a friend of the Elliott family. Bank Vice President Tommy Elliott killed in the shooting. He feels there should be a mental health assessment before people buy guns. How long the waiting period should be, there should be some background uh, checks, mental health checkup. Detectives retrieved Connor Sturgeon's Instagram stories just hours before the shooting on April 10th. Sturgeon even wrote, quote, these people did not deserve to die, but because I was depressed and able to buy a gun, they're gone. Still, Bobber says there needs to be immediate action to end gun violence and a mental health checkup could show if someone is mentally healthy for a weapon. To see that if there is somebody who is on the edge uh, to break down and do something which uh, will not only harm everybody else around them, but it will also harm them and uh, hurt their loved ones too. Sturgeon's family took him to emergency therapy days before the shooting. He was on various mental health medications. Sturgeon wrote in large caps, I am sorry, I can't take it anymore. In the end, Sturgeon said he had two goals, kill himself and stop gun violence to send a message to politicians. And a group of survivors and victims' families are planning to sue the gun manufacturer, Radical Firearms of Texas. They say the goal is to prevent weapons like the one used in this shooting from being in the hands of people mentally unable to handle them. In a statement tonight, attorneys say they're reviewing this report as they move forward with preparing to file that lawsuit. Taylor, thank you very much. Now, more of our coverage right now from the night team. The investigative report also goes into further details about how the shooting unfolded inside the bank that morning. Police say Sturgeon shot the first person who survived out in the hallway before then going into the conference room. 13 people were inside the conference room, including the five victims, Josh Barrick, Jim Tut, Tommy Elliott, Juliana Farmer, and Dina Eckert. Police say Sturgeon fired approximately 25 to 30 rounds into the conference room, adding only one person was able to leave the room unharmed and immediately leave the building. Investigators say it was about eight minutes from when the first person was shot until LMPD officer Corey Galloway shot and killed Sturgeon, ending the shooting. A morning of terror live changed in eight minutes. 
The file, by the way, also includes medical reports and addresses concerns from Sturgeon's parents about CTE, or chronic traumatic encephalopathy. That's the result of multiple repeated head injuries. Sturgeon's family said that he had three, quote, concussions of significant, end quote, playing sports in middle and high school. After the shooting, they requested that the state medical examiner examine his brain, looking to see if CTE was a factor in his actions. After the exam from the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota, the investigative file says, quote, consultation with the medical experts involved with the examination of the brain determined CTE was not present. To read the full report from LMPD, you can go to whas11.com and click on this story on our home page. The other top story we've been following today, one of two women charged in the death of little Cairo Jordan learned her sentence today. The five-year-old was found dead in a suitcase in Washington County, Indiana last year. And a judge sentenced Dawn Coleman to a total of 30 years today after she pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit murder. WHAS 11's Alexis Jones was there as he handed down his decision. You'll still have a life. Cairo's Jordan's is gone. Painful words from Judge Larry Medlock just moments before handing down Coleman's sentence. Police say Coleman helped Cairo Jordan's mother dispose of his body last year. The five-year-old was later found in Salem, Indiana, inside of this suitcase. Unfortunately, the walls of your jail cell will be nothing compared to the walls of that suitcase. I hope the image is forever etched in your memory. It was thought that this child was possessed by the devil. But it's you, Don Coleman, that has the devil in your soul. As a part of Coleman's plea deal, Medlock centers her to 30 years. She will spend the first 25 at the Indiana Department of Corrections, then the remaining five years on probation. To me, that's a slap on the wrist. I think she should never get out. It's not fair for this little boy. Janet Irk didn't know Cairo, but says she followed his case since the very beginning. Tuesday, she sat in the courtroom alone, despite prosecutors reaching out to Cairo's loved ones. No one even reported that Cairo was missing. So I guess it doesn't surprise me that no one showed up here today. I was hoping they could make it, but George is a long way. It's, I, I have no idea how they feel. I know how I would feel if it was my grandchild or my child. Defense attorneys say Dijon Anderson's actions were gut-wrenching to many, including them. They are sure Coleman doesn't know where she's located, but plans to testify against her once she's found. Our client um, feels that the mother's responsibility is something that we need to be able to bring in front of the court at some point. Sergeant Kerry Holes with Indiana Police Department agrees. He says investigators are actively searching for Anderson. Our detectives are very diligent, a, a great group of guys and gals uh, have worked on this case. So um, we all want justice and being there from the beginning does put a, a huge weight on your shoulder to make sure that justice is served for Cairo. As for Irk, she's praying for the day his mother is found. In the meantime, she'll continue to keep the little boy close to her heart. And we'll just keep following and hoping. In Salem, Alexis Jones, WHAS 11 on your side. Again, police are still looking for Kai Rowe's mother, this woman, Dijon Anderson. Anyone with information about where she may be is asked to call police immediately. Happening here in Louisville, the trial of a man accused of killing two people inside a crowded Roosters restaurant ended in a mistrial just hours after it began today. Carson Reitz is charged with two counts of murder and four counts of wanton endangerment for the shooting on December 23rd, 2021. Prosecutors say surveillance video shows Reitz shoot Mike Miller and Bradley Cross inside the Preston Highway restaurant, causing panic in the crowded restaurant that night. Opening statements in the trial started at 1.30 this afternoon, but we learned about 4.45 that the judge had declared a mistrial. The Commonwealth Attorney's Office says they plan to release more details later. A domestic violence suspect shot by a Louisville Metro police officer last week is now facing federal charges. A federal grand jury indicted Jerron Bobbitt for possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Police say Bobbitt was armed with an AR-style pistol circled by LMPD in this body camera video on your screen when he ran from officers in the Wyandotte neighborhood of the South End. Investigators say an officer shot Bobbitt when he refused to drop the weapon. Federal prosecutors say Bobbitt was prohibited from having a gun because he had previously been convicted on felonies seven different times, dating back to 2001. 
The LMPD Deputy Chief Paul Humphrey spoke about Bobbitt's criminal history during a news conference yesterday. Obviously to be armed with, with that type of uh, weapon uh, and then resist police commands, continue to resist police commands, run through a neighborhood that is obviously occupied by homes and people, um, he, had, he presents himself as a very immediate uh, threat to the public. Bobbitt's also facing state charges, including assault and fleeing from police. New tonight, Israel has approved a ceasefire that would bring a temporary halt to its war with Hamas. Qatar and United States helping negotiate the deal for Hamas to let some hostages go in exchange for a temporary truce. A Biden administration official says three Americans are expected to be part of the initial group of hostages released. The ceasefire will also allow humanitarian aid into Gaza.